and welcome to the chaos DEI working group um, meeting. We have a little bit to talk about today and a lot um, to expand on. So um, we have the first item on the agenda here is to add live closed captioning to the working group and community meetings. So uh, is it Elizabeth, did you have that one? Yeah, I did. Um, just for, for those who didn't hear the beginning, we were chatting about this a little bit, um, but we uh, apparently that was turned on for the DEI badging meeting and it was really cool. A little tiny bit distracting, but super, super cool as it would um, just caption at the bottom of the screen what was being said and it would actually go back and self correct based on the context of the rest of your sentence, which was also very cool. Um, so it's, it seems like it might be a good idea to, if we can figure it out, how to, how to enable it on the chaos um, Zoom call um, or Zoom um, account. Um, I, think, I think it would be very helpful for a lot of our working group meetings and also the community meeting. So I want to just run it past this group and see if, the, if there were concerns about it since it is live. Um, you know, there's no real way to kind of check it, but um, it seemed to be okay. So I don't know what this group thinks about. It's instilling. certainly, I don't think it hurts anything. And, and I think it can be useful to people. Yeah, I think it's a good idea too. I'm sort of looking at it right now. So I'll see if it's available. Okay, cool. Thanks, Matt. That's going to distract me for the entire meeting, just so y'all know, <laughs> while I try to find okay. the right button to push. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a tiny bit distracting. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and move forward to the, um, we, it looks like we're going to update the goals for what we want to do next year, because our last update to this um, the uh, working group goals was 2019. So I'm going to share my screen here. And um, we've got um, a bunch of, um, did you see my, the working group goals for 2019 on your screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so how, how do y'all think um, we want to do this? Do we want to go through, have some action items for certain areas or do we want to go through it in the meeting? Um, I guess I'd be curious to know, like, who's the audience of this document? I'm new to this. I think when it was first put together, the audience was kind of ourselves, you know, like the DEI working group. And this has been um, helpful in the badging initiative as well. We focus by release and we try to figure out how we can, um, what we can get accomplished over the next release generally. I think that direction would help a lot. So maybe for the purpose of this meeting, we can kind of identify some top level objectives that we want to meet. And um, in the next in the next year, and kind of talk about those. Yes, I think that'd be good. Sorry, that was from dark to light. That actually hurt my eyes. <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's let's identify some objectives. I'm going to go on quiet and let you talk about it. Just so you know, I pushed a button for closed captioning. I, I don't think we would see it in this meeting. From the sounds of it, it sounds like once the next meeting starts. So whoever's in the next meeting, take a look. So it gets set at our account level? Yes. So I was like on the in the chaos community thing, the meetings at chaos.community or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. To add some direction here, I guess the question would be, um, what what is something we could get accomplished within a year? That wouldn't be overwhelming, but at the same time would be kind of a landmark movement forward for the DEI working group. I 
I think um, based on the next bullet, uh, maybe uh, onboarding, like, uh, I don't know if we want to leave it as general as like improving the onboarding process or experience, or if we want something a little more tangible, but I think that's maybe something we could do in a year. That level is good, at least right now. Um, I had another question too. So we have our internal reflection, um, the DEI project that's going on right now, and we're going to be doing that survey. Um, and then from the survey, I assume that there might be some things that come out of that, or also um, some recommendations from the DEI um, audit team as well. And I guess my question is, who is responsible for implementing that? Is that this group? Or is that a, a different group? Or, I mean, I guess it depends on the recommendations, but is that something that we would take responsibility for in some level? Um. I think we is this part of that conversation like is this working group responsible for like doing DEI related things within the chaos project versus like doing DEI things that help others I know that like it's not a super clear distinction between the two um and your your comment was does the risk group do like a risk analysis on the chaos project like that's you don't no <laughs> right exactly you don't <laughs> but you provide like insights into how others could think about risk and of course we could use that information yeah. ourselves um so we're still kind of thinking it would be this like other group that's tbd yeah but that group doesn't exist right yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe um, would it make sense for this group to help create that group? What if we just brought it to the community call and said, all right, folks, <laughs> like community folks, or um, even to like the, um, I don't know, like we just kind of promote it broadly across the chaos project and even if people aren't attending this meeting that's okay you know because i know some people can't make it and um you know, a lot of the things aren't like i don't think that they're um like super dei like like you need it like a lot of it is like let's get this information into the handbook let's update you know, let's take a look at where we think about storing survey data. Like, I don't know, they're kind of like logistics things sometimes that are that happen to be about DEI. Um, so that would be my first thought. Okay, so should I put that on the agenda then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And I mean, the other the other truth out of this is, is that you, Sean and myself have been kind of the, we've been a member of that reflection team for a while. So, I mean, I do think it's like important for the three of us to provide some consistency. Yeah, to also be there. And I would suspect that the three of us will do some of this implementation would be my guess. Awesome. Well, that conversation kind of mutated, but it became very relevant to what our top level goals are. Um, it sounds like something we want to figure out is, um, well, reflect on the DER reflection is kind of ambiguous, but kind of to provide some context, it sounds like we're trying to figure out what our role is in, um, in like what, what our responsibility is as a working group. I don't know if I, I'm here. Am I hearing that right? Say that again, Matt. I'm trying to think, is this a, a kind of a conversation of identifying our role as a working group in the chaos project? Yeah, I think it's whether or not we take on additional uh, tasks in this project. So, um, <coughs> 
like we build metrics, we have the DEI badging program, like we provide a lot of these services and insights for other people, but is it the role of this working group to, to really kind of do that work within the chaos project? Okay, and Justin, you've got your hand up? Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Cool, so one thing that I was thinking about is one thing I've seen in other communities is knowing that this kind of work is more of this community meta work, whereas these working groups have mostly been defined around what we've been doing for the past few years. Um, I've seen these meta working groups emerge as kind of being a bridge across many different established groups in a community. And that working group being specifically uh, a cross team or cross functional group of people who do some of that going in between to collect feedback. Well, like what are some of the things that the risk group might look at? Or what are some of the things the DEI working group might look at? And then putting together the actual implementation and proposals for well, how can we implement some of that feedback or best practices in our own project. To give an example, the Fedora project has a community operations team, which does this kind of work. It goes between a lot of the different teams in the project to help tie, tie things together and implement some of those uh, implement some of these ideas and solutions that help make collaboration or best practices easier in the project. So maybe that's one direction to go because I'm a little bit right now I'm kind of against the idea of broadening the scope of all the working groups to do this for the chaos community too, just because I think it's, it's different from what we've been doing the past few years. And I think there's a way we could bring in new contributors by spinning up a new group that's more focused on this kind of community operations work over. I like that, uh, the idea of a community operations group. I mean, we've, in a not DEI context, we were doing this, Yash and Ritik were doing this when we were doing the metrics release, because they had to coordinate with every working group to kind of get their repositories organized in a very particular way. Um, encourage the working groups to make changes, you know what I mean? So it was an operations thing. And Yash and Ritik in that case weren't necessarily members of any of the specific working groups, but they were very much interested in the operations of the working groups so that we had consistency uh, in places where we needed it for the, for the release process. Um, so I, I like that, I like that quite a bit. And I'm not sure would it make sense to bring that up in the community meeting or on the mailing list? What would be the, the best path for that? I think the community meeting is a good place, would be a, a really good place to go. Um, I already added it. <laughs> As you were talking, Justin, I was like, yep, we're talking about that. Super, super. <laughs> so I really like that idea a lot. So what I'm kind of hearing is that we have like this, this almost monolithic, well, this like kind of one level tree of like, we've got the community call and then we've got all the working groups that kind of report to that, but we don't really have much. Um, we have these groups, like, like, like Justin said, that have been kind of put in place between these working groups and the bridge these working groups, but like something that kind of ties it all together, like from this one to this one and all that, all that stuff. That's my graphic for it, but um, that's what I'm hearing. Can we add um, metrics <laughs> to our objectives, like to continue to build those out? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, continuing to build metrics. That, do, is, that, is that our number one objective still? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think metrics and um, the badging program is a really important thing that I believe has a home in this working group. Like, I, mean, I understand. <laughs> it's, it's like that gray area again, you know, but. Um, 
How about this? I, I think that this working group is always a place to talk through questions with respect to badging. Okay, <clears throat> that works for us. And we, um, as a group with our own meeting too, badging is doing, I think it's doing really well. Um, I'm glad to see that it's doing well. And I think that root in the chaos DEI working group is really a big part of it. Uh, to the point of the metrics, I'm looking at the spreadsheet and there's a section we don't have any metrics for. So maybe that's something we want to put on our objectives. It's recognition of good work. We have a few that are considering, but nothing has been in progress or released. And um, communication inclusivity has two that are in progress, but none, no others. So those might be some areas we want to focus on just because we don't have anything there. Just an idea. That makes a lot of sense. Now that I'm on screen tree, you can see the amount of random text editing I do. <laughs> but um, that is uh, that looks like a, a really good um, like hot point is the recognition of good work. We really need to have some metrics in there. <clears throat> so um, did, do we have any more to talk about with this um, with this set of um, top level objectives? Or should we move on? Okay, um, we've got my action item from last week. Um, this this item right here, the organizational changes. Um, we just I just built that because we had just talked about it as kind of a separate topic. But um, as far as the identify problems and solutions in chaos onboarding, I'm going to go over these real quick. Um, just that we have the the three issues that I kind of realized, and and the ones that I've seen kind of out working in the chaos project is that. Uh, potential contributors may not know how to enter the project or how to get involved. Um, they might not know how to start contributing once they do get involved, how to, how to start working. And they may not have a good avenue to ask questions as part of that. And then the, the last part is what we had just talked about is that the CAS project is fairly segmented. So getting into one working group is, takes almost as much work to get into the next working group and so on, because there's not, not so much that they're different from each other, but that they don't have much of a connection between like kind of laterally. Um, the solution I had to the first one was simple, direct and for, for entering the project is simple, direct and centralized page for new contributors. Um, more avenues for contributors to ask questions would probably help with the start starting to contribute and then the Segmented nature of the chaos project, just the, the what we had just talked about, the cross meeting collaboration. Um, what are some thoughts on this? So, Matt, are you looking for like how we can build out these solutions, or is that kind of where you're at? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about necessarily if these make sense to people or if they resonate with them um, and seeing if they if they've had some of the same problems or kind of if if this makes a lot of sense then we should probably I should probably start building some solutions that are a little more concrete but I, I wanted to bring this top level up just to see if this if this works if this makes any sense and if you are worried about it, this is a safe space to. Um, this oh, is I, think this is, I think this is good. Um, on the, with respect to kind of the first and the second one, um, we were talking, doing a debrief with some of the Google Summer of Code students, because you know they, Google Summer of Code is funny because they're, they are new contributors, but they're coming in as, under a program. Um, so they have to cross that bridge of not being familiar with the project to being familiar with the project in relatively short order, you know? So that's a, um, and one of the things that came up was the, in the repositories, one of the best things was the contributing.md file. 
as, as we have. So they really liked that as a way to kind of orient things. And so maybe, maybe these two, the first one and the second one could be kind of targeted at that contributing MD file. Yeah, and kind of by that's a great lead. And by what I've been reading um, about onboarding and kind of how to get new people in, a lot of that comes from having a really good contributing guide, but then not having any links to it or good ways to get to it from like maybe the website or the the, the GitHub page, other than just clicking directly on the file. So I'm gonna put some notes in here. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Um... It would be great to have, like you said, a centralized page, um, because I don't know, like we don't really have the office hours listed and except for maybe under participate, but I think it would be really good to have like have the, all that stuff like if you're new to the project click here, you know, like one place where someone can go and see what to do and where to find stuff so I, I think that's great. Yeah, and originally I'd, I would be hesitant to put it in a markdown file, but at the same time, markdown is where a lot of our work lives. So that's something you might have to have some comfortability with if you're coming in from you know, left field looking at the project. Um, as far as the second one, I don't necessarily know how to do this, I'll be honest. Um, we, we ask if people have questions, but I'd like to find a different way that we could ask questions, that we could op be open for questions, maybe even asynchronously, that doesn't require hopping in a meeting and talking out loud, if that makes any sense. Maybe we could point people to the community repo. Like if you have a question about something of an issue or, you know, something like that, would that be good? My big concern with that, I, I thought about that, and my big concern is that opening an issue to a new project, especially as a new contributor, and a new, even as a new person in open source, for sure, um, it can be extremely intimidating. So maybe even just having some kind of anonymous Q&A or something. I don't know, um, what do y'all think? So I guess I can share my thoughts because I'm in that space right now, being new to open source and newer to the community. Um, yeah, definitely ditto the, the intimidating mm. thing. I think like, for me, and maybe this is somewhere and I'm just not sure where to find it, kind of to our previous point, but like, I don't know what to contribute necessarily. Is there a place that we have like, here are the things that we're looking to do, here's the upcoming work. Cause like, I wanna help, I just don't know what to do. Um, so that would kind of be my, my two cents there. I like that a lot. Um, we do focus a lot on like how to contribute, like here are the meetings, here's the mail list. <coughs> Twitter or whatever, um, like here are things and you can attend these meetings, but I like the what component of here's what you can do. <laughs> you can, um, I don't know, we should probably just have a list of, and we do have those good first issues you know I'm talking about. Yep. Elizabeth, you were gonna say something. Um, I was gonna just, uh... So back, I guess it was probably last year, we started doing in the newsletter, like a volunteer opportunity of the week. And it was like, had like what it is, how much time it would take, what skills you need, all like all the things in a nice little package. But that didn't, or I guess over the month, we did it like maybe three or four times. And then that kind of fell away as nothing really surfaced uh, as like a, we tried to keep it in like a nice little box, you know, something that would be easy for people to wrap their head around and, and, you know, contribute, but maybe we could kind of resurface that and like take some time to brainstorm what, what those things might look like. And I can take an action item to, to pull those up for, for next time or wherever, whenever we want to keep working on this. Um, Cause I, it, we, I mean, we would get like immediate responses when things are very clear and the boundaries are very clear of like how much time and, and what skills are needed and stuff. So um yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to bring those back up as just some ideas of where we can go with this idea. Lauren, that's fantastic. I love that. I would, is there a possibility to, on the chaos homepage too, like right now, it's the header at the top that says what we are. It's a list of our software initiatives and working groups, which is good. 
Um, and then below that, we have that gray banner, which is like chaos con is now back. You know what I mean? Like, would there be a <laughs> just would there be a way like on that page to be like kind of the the scoped things that you're talking about, Elizabeth? Like, click here for a nice set of, you know, very accessible things that you can do to start participating in the chaos project or start uh, contributing to the chaos project. I would yeah. imagine web page is pretty, I bet it's frequented more than like the repository, at least for new, new contributors. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I think it absolutely should be there somewhere. I'm, I'm not a designer, so I don't know where, but um, you know, maybe we could take inspiration from other open source projects that are larger and kind of maybe have figured this out. Um, like I'm thinking of Drupal uh, in particular because, you know, they have such a huge community and a, a very diverse community and they seem to be doing a lot of things right. So um, that would be one. And maybe Justin, like in the Fedora project, maybe you all have figured this out already of how to kind of point people to the, you know, volunteer opportunities from the get go, that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, there was one thing I was thinking about and I was going to dig a link up for is that we have this um, easy fix page. Let me see, I can share a link to the to the page first, but it all it is is it's a collection of good first issues across all of our repositories. And um, it, that, that work is actually getting a revamp now. Um, I think if I share this link, this is where some of the new code is being written and it's being written in a way where it's easier to repurpose for other communities, but it's still a work in progress. Um, but that said, this is just an automated way of doing this. So it's a little bit easier. Um, I think the way that that list was started first was it was actually a, a manually curated list by a, by a human to you know, go and collect those good first issues. And it does have a maintenance burden because then those things get closed and then you have to remember to update the list. And if you have a lot of different repos, that means you probably need to have a couple of different people who are actually checking it. So it actually gets updated when work happens, you know, the risk working group, oh, well, they finished all their good first issues and now they have five new ones. Well someone has to go update that list. But um, so I guess to that end, this is one tool we could use or or, um, or or borrow from. But at the very least, if not, if we don't want to go down the tooling route, it's just, I think, a place of making that space in a visible location on the site and collecting those things and working together with the stakeholders and like the different working group to so the community working group to actually surface what those things are over. I yeah, like so for that. like, oh, sorry, Matt. No, um, no. I was just going to say on the Drupal site, if you go to their site, there's like three clear buttons. Try Drupal, get involved, give you support. <laughs> like those are the three things that you can kind of do. And then if you click on get involved, then there's a, a really nice page of like what their values are and, you know, how, you know, how you can join um, things that are important to them. And then, you know, different, there's some different buttons at the bottom of like what would be interesting to you, like community working group promote Drupal, whatever, you know, mentoring, that kind of stuff. So um, it's it's almost like a, a, a very good, like recruiting page, almost like, you know, you're going for a job really, but even though it's just for volunteers, obviously I don't, I don't know that, I don't know how that works, but, um, but it, it's a good page. So, yeah, just my two cents. I've got an idea. Oh. Go ahead. It's gonna, it, it would involve some work, but what about something like uh, Twitter posts for good first issues that post them? Or maybe even, well, I don't know, that could be done with a bot, it could be done manually, but like maybe just some kind of like showcase every once in a while, this is something that we could get worked on, we need help. Um, and like you said, Matt, with this banner, we could have an optional banner that just says something like, we need help with something with, with this issue or something like that. As simple Actually, as that, really. I thought the that if you scroll up a little bit, that learn more button. Like if you want to, that's just the about page. So like I'm pretty <laughs> familiar with if I want to read more, I just go to about. So that's if you go back a page. 
So there's actually two ways to get to that learn more button you, by clicking that button you just did or going up to the about, which is a very normal thing to do as well. Yeah, there's also on um, chaos software is under the software tab and they're missing one too. And then chaos initiatives is under the initiatives tab. Yeah, so my thought was to on the learn more, like just get rid of that button or just replace it by saying, like, help us or get something involved. like that. Yeah, yeah get involved, <laughs> contribute. Mm -hmm. You know, like, join us, yeah, something. Yeah, join us in in like how do we say it like, um, like we need to say it in a way like, join us. Here's some some issues that new contributors could work on. Like we actually spell it all out. Like here are, if you're new to the chaos, like we just say here are issues for new members, or here are things that as a new member you could work on. Like this is just spelled out in full, <laughs> in full text, so that people understand what clicking that would do. Yeah, Justin, go ahead. I don't know if this is too much of a sidebar, but building on that, I think on one hand it it is useful to define all that information and lay it out. But something I've seen in some other communities too is actually taking a human centered approach to that. So. It's not just Fedora, but I'll pick on Fedora again, that we have a, a join SIG, uh, which is actually a group of people who want, you know, are, are, want to help newcomers get involved and contribute to the project. And the approach that that team takes is just to be a human, uh, a human entry point in a project. So you have a question or you want to talk to someone about, about the project or what you, you know, what you're interested in and, and have a, hu a real human being to talk that through with. That's where that join SIG and also in other communities I've seen where they've taken that approach. Um, so you can also find all these things if you're if you're in that self starter kind of attitude or mood, you can jump in, look for the information and and dive in deeper. But I think sometimes just having that human connection first of maybe like don't know where to begin, come talk to a human and get get a little bit of mentorship, like talk to someone for 30 minutes or open a ticket or a, a mailing list post where we'll we have folks who are ready to help newcomers. That might be one option. I don't know if it's too much of a sidebar because it's kind of more of a human uh, resource question than it is writing text up and, and going that way, but maybe it builds on the, the community operations group, or maybe that's the role that the community group could play. I don't know, but that's one thing that I've seen that I've really liked. And I think it has made a huge difference just by having a, a human being entry point into an, a, a larger project like chaos over another idea how about a get in touch button that goes to schedule a meeting to figure out more about the chaos project or something like that or, or, or maybe even a set of options and how you can get started with the chaos project and interact with the real person i really like the human centered approach idea we did we are doing office hours I think office hours can work for some people, but I think having that explicit opportunity of having an unstructured time, which I mean, I guess office hours are unstructured too, but I know that can also be intimidating, like thinking back to some of my experience with some communities, like when I was new, office hours were just as intimidating to me as it was to uh, go and open a new issue just because it's like, oh, I'd get nervous. Like, well, what do I talk about? What do I, what do I ask? Like, I think this mentorship piece or getting in touch needs to have some structure in place. So it's not like a total, you know, blank where it's like you have to think of all the questions you need to ask in advance, which might not always be clear to you if you're still very early on. But I don't think it needs to be so structured where it's like, you know, planning every every piece of the interaction. Like it needs to be a little bit organic too. But I don't know. So like office hours could be a part of that. But maybe maybe it would be making a specific block of like here's the mentorship <laughs> hour or I don't know maybe alternating it. To that point, would it would it be a lot of work to have like buddies? So like the the Google Summer of Code, you know, they have like their mentors, and that's the person, that's their contact person, that's who they go to. 
So like, would it, would it, is, is there benefit in having like, Hey, here's a, here's a team of people. And then, you know, we have someone new that come into the project and then they get maybe assigned a buddy or something that is the person that kind of like keeps them engaged, keeps them involved, like checks on them just to see if they have any questions or it's just like that one kind of friendly face, kind of like what Justin was saying of, um, uh, you know, making it a little more human centered. Um, like I wouldn't mind doing that at all. I would, I would love to do that. Um, I don't know if that's creepy or weird. Like I don't, <laughs> and I don't I mean, know, like, where does it end? You know, like how much do I like, you know, try to engage this person. Make. <laughs> every zoom you take <laughs> <laughs> right like i don't know maybe it's a bad idea i don't know but um it just seems like that's something that the google summer of code um, i like that idea and it doesn't sound really creepy to me at all. excellent no. big plus one yeah and what I, I mean i thought like you could have like a sign up for a, <laughs> a chaos buddy yeah uh, right and, yeah and, like the first thing we could do is you meet them and like once we get the shop set up, we could give them a code to get like a t-shirt and, or, you know, the lunch box kind of thing. You know what I mean? We could just send them a little something like, welcome, like here's a gift. That would be so rad. I, I think <laughs> We'd have a bunch of people. Us, like, just, like... You just click the buddy button and you get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You know, or maybe we wait for like a couple months before we give a code out, <laughs> but something like that. We can start with the misprinted shirts that we have. And then oh, I had to return those. They took them back, which I was a little disappointed about. <laughs> okay. uh, it's probably a tax deduction or something. <laughs> it might be. So, um, so it sounds like we have a lot of ideas. Uh, I'm what my when I, what my goal for the next meeting is is I'm going to come up with a more concrete solution to at least one of these or just one of these, and then I'm going to bring it back to the group and say, what can we do um, to make this better and how can we implement it in the project? Um, that's kind of my goal. Uh, and then we about the mm -hmm. mentorship project. Uh, Elizabeth, do you want to get in contact with me and maybe anyone else who might be involved want to get involved? And then we can just start um, working out how that's going to work. Sure. Cool. I really like that idea. Um, I think mentorship is one of the best ways to learn, to be honest. So I like the naming of like chaos friend or chaos buddy or something <laughs> like mentor seems like <laughs> already to. Yeah, I shouldn't be teaching anybody anything. <laughs> I should just be like, that's I'll be your friend. I said it. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm like, don't, yeah. Just don't, don't take my advice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we have a couple more minutes. Um, do we want I, to go over release for a few comments? Or, um, Sean, do you have an update on the branch? I have, a, I have a small update that I'd, I'd like, or a small thing I'd like to ask of the group. I'm going around from working group to working group to ask if your working group wants to change the name of your primary branch from, oh, you guys have done it already. Never mind. We did this Where for you. We did this last week. Never mind. Yeah. Here I am. And it's well, done. You, John. Mission um, accomplished. Keep going. Okay. Sorry so about we that. have we have about eight more minutes. Do you, do you want to go over the um the the release updates for looking at issue comments and see if there's anything we can change? I don't think there's been any comments yet. Last time okay. I looked. Which is fine. Okay. I did have one question before you go on. So with respect to the goals for 2022, I guess, how should we, how should we do this? Like we probably want to archive the goals for the ones that were there for 2019. So we'll have to pull that out of there. And then, I mean, I suppose I could take the action item to just like just really roughly getting those four or five things that are on there. I don't know if it was five things that were in there. Like without much content, but that'll give us a place to start working on those goals next week. Or all right, what I what I, maybe with the smarter thing to do would be to start a Google Doc around those. I think that's a little easier to work with. I'll do that right now, in fact. 
All right, and for this meeting, I have just postponed the metrics release comments. I, I, we got to stop using the word tabled, so I use postponed. <laughs> okay, do we have any other topics for this meeting? We might even get five minutes back. We need a facilitator for next week. Oh, that's right. Which I'm happy to do if nobody else wants to do it. I will let you do that. Wait, Sean, did you say you would do it? I said I would let Elizabeth do that. Uh, <laughs> okay, sounds like Elizabeth has got it. All right, well, thank you everybody for coming to the DEI working group meeting. Uh, hope to see you again next week. Hope to see some of you at the um, upcoming conference. And um, yeah, have a good night. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.